So I'm going to talk about platform. And I decided to label this uh, section platform first. Because if you look at the history of our company in the two and a half years we've been around, we spend most of our efforts on our core platform. And we decided to focus on platform because we believe to consolidate the secondary <coughs> workflow, you need a brand new architecture. Uh, and we learned this firsthand when we were, we were at Google. So Mohit and I were at Google in the early 2000s. And if you remember back then, there were two big search engines. One was Google, and the other one was Yahoo. 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 <laughs> Alta Vista was 1998, <laughs> correct. In the 2000s, it was Yahoo, right? And these two companies had a very different uh, approach to solving search. Google built its own infrastructure. So think of uh, Google file system, GFS, right, to, to store uh, web data. Uh, think of MapReduce, which is the analytic engine, to do all this processing. Yahoo, on the other hand, they went with traditional architecture. So they bought a ton of NetApps. Uh, Dan Warmerhoven told us that they were like the, the best customers. Okay. They bought thousands of NetApps. The, the good thing about buying NetApps is you get up and running very quickly. However, uh, they're all basically individual silos of filers. So Yahoo could not harness the overall uh, capacity of all the NetApps to do this kind of big data processing. Uh, so, so Google uh, invested in sort of platform. They understood that they need a new architecture to solve this new problem. Uh, and so as a result, they sort of won the search wars. Yeah. So we believe that um, with secondary storage, we're facing the same kind of phenomenon. You've got to have a new architecture to solve this new problem. And I want to talk about this slide that Mohit showed just a second ago. Uh, so these are different uh, storage systems you have in your secondary, uh, uh, your, your, for your secondary storage. You look at target storage. They're optimized for sequential writes, right? You want ingest lots of data uh, in your backup window. And they're also optimized for very compact storage, uh, so deduplication, compression. Right? They're not very good. They're actually terrible at random I.O., okay? And they don't handle small files. If you look at file shares and test and dev, these are your typical filers. So they're good at general random I.O. Uh, they're good at small files, metadata operations but they're not very good at bulk reads and bulk writes. Look at analytics for analytics. So these are typically, these are kind of your modern file systems. These are HDFS and S3 compatible type file systems. They're scale out, which is good. So you can, you can be cost effective adding uh, new storage. And they're optimized for sequential reads and writes, right? for, for things like MapReduce and Hadoop. Uh, but they're very poor at uh, random I.O. They're very poor at metadata operations. And architecturally, what you see is that you can't take one system and morph it to something else. You can't take a controller-based um, target storage and say, now be a scale-out distributed uh, file system used for analytics. In the same way, you can't take HDFS and say, OK, now be a strongly consistent uh, filer that can uh, 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 Perform random I/O. Okay. Architecturally, it just the, the make decisions, and, and um, you, you you just can't morph them that way. So to go from this picture to this picture, we believe you need a brand new architecture. Yeah. And this brings me to sort of our design philosophy. Logically, this is sort of three steps. The first is identifying the scope of the solution we want to solve. So the, the, our solution is we want to be able to take the strength of all these systems and put it in one box. That means we want to have uh, the, the read-write uh, bandwidth that you see in target storage and in, um, in analytics file systems. We want to have the density of target storage. And we want to be able to perform random I.O. And, small, and handle small files, handle uh, metadata operations as good as uh, a, a traditional NAS filer. And the second step is you got to design the platform. And the first thing you do is you got to hire the right people. Okay. And as Mohit said, we have a very strong team, a lot of distributed systems background, file systems background. And then we took the learnings and research in distributed systems in the last 15, 20 years, uh, primarily pioneered by Google, and put it in this platform. And then third, we execute and implement the system. Okay. 
So this is what we mean by hyperconvergence. Uh, as Mohit said, uh, it's all these kind of workflows that we built on top. And the core that I'm going to talk about today is our core data platform underneath. This is the foundation that sort of powers all the workflows above. And the workflows that we're going to talk about is data protection, file shares, test dev, and analytics. And what's good about building it from the ground up is that all the benefits of the platform just gets better and better as you add more of these use cases. So for example, simplicity. We have a paradigm of, um, of <coughs> doing work regardless of scale. So what that means is managing a three node cluster is exactly the same as managing a 100 node cluster. Take that paradigm to data protection. This means protecting one VM or database is the same as protecting 1,000 databases. Same thing with test and dev. Provisioning a test and dev environment for a database is the same as provisioning your whole test and dev environment. Second is control, and Mohit uh, spoke about this. Now that you have one large pool of storage and resource that you can reallocate and <coughs> reuse for different purposes, you have a lot of control over how that storage is going to be used. And third is efficiency. Uh, so one is copy data management, right? So if, if you back up the data onto us, we can spin up a zero clone, uh, zero copy clone to do a test and dev. And also efficiency in terms of management. Um, is with one single pane of glass, you don't have to go through many consoles uh, to manage a secondary storage. Yes, sir. So I have a question. You, you are adding a lot of uh, boxes on top of the platform, mm -hmm. but uh, do we also have a QoS mechanism of some sort? Because yeah. you are talking about many things. That That's right. Yes. So this is sort of a, yeah. just an illustration of, to, to put these stacks, <coughs> uh, but the customers don't have to go in this order. So they can, they can start with file shares or test and dev, um, but our typical customer adoption path is sort of in this order. So they start they start with with data protection, and then they add file shares and test them analytics. Right, and the QoS is sort of spans okay. across spans across all that. And I'll show so, you the next slide. So oh, what? Nice. Okay. Oh, never. Go ahead then. Okay. Yeah. Any questions on this before I move on? Okay. So in the, in the uh, next few slides, I will talk about each of these layers, and that will probably answer your question. The first is the, our physical layer, right? So uh, the specs are here. We have a C2000 series. Um, the uh, two key takeaway is that one, uh, it is built on high performance off the shelf hardware. So our customers can cost effectively scale out. The second is that we have a hybrid system. We have SSDs and spinning hard drives. And through our intelligent software, we give you the best of both worlds. We give you the performance of SSD at the cost effective and density of hard drives. Okay. Okay, now this is the meat of the, this is the, meat of the talk, and, and QoS is something that you mentioned. So this is Oasis, which is our distributed file system. Uh, building a, a distributed file system is really tough. Building an infinitely scalable one is even tougher. And, and so we have to be very careful to make sure that each operation, there are no single point of performance bottlenecks. So this means that as you add more nodes, you linearly scale uh, your <coughs> performance. At the, at the base level of our system is our lock manager and distributed key value store. The lock managers allows the nodes to communicate and, and coordinate, and the key value store allows them to communicate through a persistent layer. But so that's sort of uh, the, the underlying system for our distributed system, and above that we build our file system. And one of the key components of that is our snap tree. We went into detail last time uh, when you guys are here, explaining exactly how snap tree works. But Snaptree is our data structure to, um, to represent our file system and also our files. And it allows us to have, take infinite snapshots without snapshot chains. I don't know if you guys remember what that was last time. Okay, so it's very efficient snapshots and it allows you to do zero copy clones that you need for test dev. And then we have a lot of other modules, for example, the data journal. Right? This is a distributed journal that uh, absorbs random IO mm. so that we get the benefits of uh, using SSD for uh, latency, sen latency sensitive operations. Um, we have our self healer. This is our, this, <coughs> our this things like garbage collection and there's things like uh, rebalancing data. So if you add a node to our cluster, we automatically rebalance the node, uh, the data throughout the, the new nodes. A so data mover. Yes. What's the significance of the colors? 
Um, no significance. Okay. Um, they're roughly 30% on the color wheel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they are fond of that shade of green. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, data mover, for example, this moves data between different storage tiers. Right? So we intelligently uh, figure out what data is hot and what it is cold. For hot data, we move it to the SSD tier. The cold data, we put it in the hard drive. And actually, you'll, you'll see in Nick's presentation, for even colder data, we can actually put to the cloud. How is data protected when it's written? Is it duplicated or written with RAID? How is, how is that done? What's that? When the data is written mm -hmm. to the system, how is it protected? Is, it, is, it, is all the data mirrored or is it written with a, a RAID stripe? Uh, so we have a RF factor of two. So every piece of block that we write, we write it in two places. So, this, so we can tolerate no failures. If, it, if you pull out a node, uh, no data is lost. So not a, <clears throat> not a, not a, um, uh, crap, totally escaping me. <laughs> a plus three, what do you, uh, erasure code? Erasure yeah, code. not erasure coding. <laughs> yeah, right now we don't support that, okay. but that's something we can support later. Um, but what we find is erasure coding only gives you some benefits. The real benefits is in, the, in our dedupe, and I'll talk about that a little bit more. And what type of snapshots do you use? What kind of snapshots? Yeah, copy on right, redirect, redirect, on right. redirect on right. Okay. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, cows are pretty much dead. <laughs> okay. And then above that is sort of our data layer. Compression, encryption is pretty standard. But our global dedupe is, is really cool. So as, as Mohit said, it's true cluster-wide global dedupe. We use uh, variable link dedupe. And... Um, and we have both inline dedupe as well as post-process dedupe. So for inline, it means that as, it's, as the data is coming in, we're doing deduping, and post-process means you know we absorb all the writes and we do and we dedupe at a later time uh, with the self healer. So you said you're doing variable block deduplication. Yeah. Yes. Did you license the Rocksoft patents? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not aware of that. Somebody is okay. somewhere. Okay. Somebody is somewhere. <laughs> Well, the, uh, the, the dedupe algorithm is a, is a paper that written uh, a few years ago. So uh, we'll, we'll right. take that one offline. We'll take that offline. Yeah. All right. And then above that is sort of our services there. So for example, QoS, right? Uh, this is a converged storage platform. So we're going to have multiple uh, streams of activity going into the system. You have a backup at the same time, test and dev, at the same time you're running analytics. And you need to have performance isolation. So you don't want one job to completely dominate and take all the resources. And so, so QoS does that for us. Um, so it is a matter of saying this operation is more important than oper that operation or yes. just... So you can okay. say this job is more important than, than this job. Okay. Are these uh, licensed features or does the box come with everything turned on? It comes with everything turned on. Good question. And, and then replication. So uh, I think last time you guys were here, it was on a roadmap and we released early this year. So now you can replicate to remote clusters. Uh, we support all sorts of topologies, one-to-one, one-to-many, many-to-many. And does the replication do hash exchange? So <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's smart replication. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other? This is a main slide. Any other questions on this? Uh, to me, this is why we can do what we do. It's because of this platform. Okay. So now I'm going to move on to talk about the use cases and workloads. Uh, as Mohit mentioned, most of our customers like consolidating, but they don't want to do everything at once. They want to take this hyper-convergence journey one step at a time. And typically, the first step they take is data protection. So we offer an integrated data protection uh, solution. Um, so this is backup software plus uh, backup target. <coughs> and um, because it's all integrated, as you add more nodes, we automatically uh, balance all that uh, ingest throughout the available nodes. We take uh, virtual and physical sources. We provide instant restores. So um, if you want to restore a VM, uh, we, provide, we provide a direct mount so that the VM gets powered up immediately. And in the background, we do storage vMotion. Okay. And, we, and we have uh, integrated orchestration that orchestrates this whole process. And for customers who love their backup software, we can act as a target storage. There's no such thing. <laughs> As someone who loves we, their we backup have, software. We have a few customers that love the backup software. Really? Yes. 
Okay. So we work well with all the backup vendors. I've never met one. I've never met them either. <laughs> and, <laughs> so <laughs> typically, the they, <laughs> I mean, I, I used to say backup software was sticky because nobody ever wanted to change from the one that they knew and loathed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. what we've seen is a, 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 a lot of customers have a hybrid solution. They use us for some things, but they use you know, the, the legacy software for other things. And as I mentioned, uh, we now support uh, replication and archival since uh, last time we met. Actually, uh, it occurs to me, do you guys have a master list of all the integrations of the other backup applications that you, that you linked? Um, so a, a master list of all the integrations. Um, do you have official relationships with these companies, or is it basically they just can use you as their target? They just use us as targets. So we, oh. just, we basically just work with all of them. Uh, we just provide a mount point, and they just write to us. As long as they support disk, you're good. We yeah. all do. Correct, they all do. Yeah. Can I, you sort of double dedupe that? Because you guys are doing dedupe. Convolve yeah. can do dedupe. Yeah. You combine the two. What's the best practice for that kind of thing? Uh, the best practice is using us as dedupe because okay. we do completely global dedupe. Um, that's you, you typically get the best uh, because then data reduction. Because they can have multiple streams coming in. Yeah. Uh, maybe from different pieces of backup software, and then we can dedupe. Yeah. In, in general, the best practice is try the dedupe at each layer and use whichever one works best, but don't try and yeah. combine them. Yeah. It's interesting. Com uh, you know, you list Commvault, and Commvault has, I don't know if I use the word historically, but historically uh, has not been so much of a friend of appliances that do dedupe. You know, their thing is like, hey, our dedupe's way better right. than anything they can do, but it's interesting that they're on your short list yeah. there. Yeah. There's, there's benefits as well from a licensing perspective to deduping in the software, depending on the software. So yeah. IBM, yeah. for example, will charge you more if you don't dedupe using their stuff. Yeah, but we we I found do much business with IBM. Uh, we found with our experiments, if you just dedupe one place, like on yeah. our box, oh, it's actually better. Yeah, place. Uh, deduping yeah, two but places. Yeah, deduping two places, it's just it's help messy. Much. Yeah. Um, it's silly. And, and, and also, a lot of these uh, um, a lot of these software when they do dedupe is dedupe per uh, media server. So it's not global. So that's another reason why our or, YouTube gets better. Or with Veeam per backup job. Yeah, so, so, uh, okay, so mm. I'm just glancing over. This is very high level of our data protection. Uh, uh, Travis will go into much more detail. Uh, we have a lot of cool stuff. So for example, replication is not just replication. We actually do so disaster recovery. Uh, you can, once you replicate to the remote node, we can allow you to spin that up into a be uh, disaster very, recover. Be very, very careful. <clears throat> what, okay. what's, what's, the R, what's the uh, RPO? Oh. And if it's not less than an hour, it's not a disaster recovery okay. solution. So you can spin up in a remote node. We can back up that, fell over, and fell back. F 15 yeah. minutes. Yeah. 15 Happy. minute granularity. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so we have all, a lot of other cool stuff here. We have application consistent backup. We have um, uh, 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 primary storage thr throttling. That means that we don't we don't overwhelm the primary system. We have we have instant uh, file search, instant recovery. A lot of cool stuff that we can probably show in the demo. Okay, moving on. I think I'm getting, running out of time. All right, uh, file shares. Um, you can use as a home directory and file shares. We support common protocols. Uh, the main takeaway here is. If you use us as a file share, your data is inherently detect, uh, protected. Okay. Through our snap tree, you can take very recent, very quick, very frequent snapshots. Um, so, and then you can sort of back that up, rep replicate, or, uh, or, tape it, or tape it out to the archive. You might have already covered this, but just to check, um, in terms of the DDoP, assuming that, so that's block level at what block size? Block level, so it's, it's a variable it's length. Variable. Yeah. yeah. And that makes a huge difference, actually, variable versus fixed it's, length. It's also policy driven. So you could set what the average is, uh, but we use an average 8K. Okay. And we have the standard you know, uh, Active Directory integration, and you get dedupe and compression from the platform. Right. Test and dev, we already talked quite a bit about this. Um, it's extraordinarily easy to, to bring up and tear down a test and dev environment. Uh, and we have bulk provisioning, which makes it super easy to sort of bring up the entire environment. And you can do all sorts of customizations with uh, network settings and so forth. Okay. And the, the key takeaway is that in, for test and dev, we are the data store. 
So you don't have to allocate storage somewhere else if you test dev. You can do it right on the cohesive. What ASM. protocol are you presenting the data store as for that? Uh, NFS. NFS. Okay, last but not least, this is really cool stuff. Uh, we talked about this last time. This is our analytics platform. So we built MapReduce directly onto our platform. Okay. So you can do parallel operations and parallel analytics on our platform itself. Uh, so for customers, they can load data onto us to do what you do with Hadoop. Or what's really cool is you can do what I call in-place analytics. So if the data is already on our platform, uh, you can then do analytics on that data itself. So you don't have to move data to our platform. It's already here via file share data protection. And what's, what you can do is you can do things like data forensics. Uh, a good example I'd like to give is, let's say in your data center you have some virus that's, that has infiltrated your data center, or, or ransomware, whatever it is, right? What you can do with analytics you, is you can go back in time and look at all the snapshots and all the backups to figure out who, to figure out how the virus spread in your system and who was patient zero. This is what you can do with our analytics platform. Some really cool stuff. Now you are working with MapReduce, which is also quite complicated for the standard people. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you think about implementing like uh, Elasticsearch or, or other tools yeah. in the future? Because yeah. uh, probably it's much easier yeah. for some people. Right. So uh, for MapReduce, uh, we do expose to sort of raw sort of compute, but we also have applications built on top. Right, so that you can just click, and so for example, social security numbers, that's something, an app that we built for you, so they can just use right off the bat. Uh, we have a password uh, file detector, you can just use right off the bat. So we don't expect most customers to write code. If they want to, they can, but we believe we want to build <coughs> these kind of applications that they can just, just use uh, right, off, uh, right from the box. What but, about? Uh, Elasticsearch, <coughs> we actually already support Elasticsearch. So our users, as, uh, as the data is, in, uh, is ingested, we uh, index it in real time, uh, and uh, our Google, our, our, our customers actually have the ability to use a Google-like search box to search through whatever has been ingested. So, but, so we already have that. Yeah. And what are they searching? The contents of the files, the names so, yeah, of the by files? Default, by, by default, we index the file names, but mm -hmm. we can also index the content. It just takes more space <coughs> yeah. for keeping that, uh, that index. So, so by default, we just index the file names, and that uh, <coughs> And, and Travis just showed this demo, uh, sort of a predictive uh, search. And then what about e-discovery? Is that a part of this for you? So this or? can be definitely used for that purpose, so, because you can comb through all of the files and, and, and look for patterns. So if I, if, if I got, like, could this be used in place of, uh, uh, it, let's say, an email archive product where somebody gets a when it gets an e-discovery request, give me all the emails that have the word Elvis in them for the last Correct. Right. however long. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So you, and then you what would you spit it out as? So, so this has that capability, uh -huh. but you need a lot more than just a raw capability, right? You need the interface, you need to okay. be able to okay. present as a mailbox. So there's a lot more stuff that has so to happen. So there's sort of the raw right. the, the, capability, but the, it's the not The raw there. engine is there, but you need all this kind of okay. so steering you, wheel. So, so you're not opening Exchange MDBs and finding emails and extracting them like index uh, engines. Not, with, not yes. with this yet, okay. uh, but, but we do have integration with Crawl that allows you to do that. With, oh, right. yeah, well. That's, that's a little bit different use case. Well, yeah. Just one, one sec. So we have, last time we presented a demo of our analytics workbench where, um, you know, our customers or we could write simple pieces of code, let's say in Java, inject that in the platform, and out comes the answer that these, mm -hmm. these, and this file has that pattern. So that could be used for doing exactly what you said, mm -hmm. uh, but that works at a file level. Uh, I think you, if you're referring to something at a mailbox level, uh, we don't have that yet, but it can be built on top. Right. Yeah, you have, you have yeah. to integrate what That's Crawl right. does That's and right. be able That's to right. dig it's, the database. It's just, yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's the bells and whistles you have to make it use. Crawl, walk, run, I'm fine. Right. <laughs> okay, uh, so my last slide is Nirvana, which is, uh, you know, ha have a converged secondary storage. Again, it's our platform and all the use cases and all the sort of the benefits of the platform just gets better and better as you add more of these use cases. Am I out of time? Okay, any, any questions before I hand it off to Travis? So if, if you buy into the concept of, you know, a, a flash array or an all flash data center, a lot of that test dev data is going to be pretty similar to the primary storage. 
because of deduplication. <coughs> How would you answer the, a concern like that? Right, I'm buy, if I'm buying you for a specific workload like test dev, right. I could probably do the same thing with what I have. So not quite as right. elegantly. But. Yeah. So I think the the answer is flash is is expensive. Okay. So you you kind of you want you don't want to buy flash for example to store your archive. That wouldn't that wouldn't make any sense. You would, but it's just very expensive. So I think with a hybrid solution, you you, you want to get the best of both worlds. You want to get the the the, the performance, but then you also want to get the density. But uh, let me also say that uh, in our definition of secondary storage, we're just defining everything non mission critical as secondary storage. And then we are saying that uh, there's a better way to run that, rather than running it in a silo, or worse, running it along with your primary storage, where it contends with your primary storage. Run it on a piece of hardware that otherwise would have been sitting idle, doing backups. Well, I think so, that's where integrations with primary storage vendors would come yeah, and, really strong. And that's what we're doing. Play. So, so right. we're doing integrations yeah. with Pure and, yeah. and stuff like that for that reason. But the idea is run production on Pure. Um, that gets backed up to us. And then you can do test and on us, but just because we are a secondary device does not mean we are slow. We also have SSDs in the appliance, mm -hmm. like Johnny said. So hard data sits on SSDs, and therefore your performance can be very, very fast, even for test and app. So does that integration with Pure exist today? So uh, yeah. we've uh, made some progress, but I would say more is coming in the future. So cool. stay tuned. Yeah. Can you say what the system is today with Pure? What? Um, what? So. What the system is today well, with what is the, what the integration? Yeah. Okay. So this is something that we're working on right now. Uh, we have an alliance with them, but we but we need to figure out sort of exactly what that integration look like. So this is in the works. But yeah, you know, mm -hmm. I think we can easily do backups and stuff uh, on them. You now the kind of integration we're looking for is uh, getting an API into getting their snapshots, uh, pull yeah. them onto us, maybe do something through our UIs um, and move stuff back and forth. Maybe get a get some DevOps workflows going. That sort of stuff. So we'll look at mm -hmm. that.